Welcome to Drupal Guitars, my name is Chris. And I'm Matt, and today we're coming to you from a slightly different angle of the shop. This is our shop computer slash CNC machine, yeah. where we're here for a very important reason. We actually, we get people in our comment section a lot asking us, uh, what would you guys recommend at a certain price range? And honestly, I'm not really shopping for a guitar under $1,000 right now, but I'm more than happy to help you spend your money. That's kind of fun. So this is five guitars under $1,000 that are the best bang for the buck. And I feel like you can uh, you can certainly trust Chris because he's obviously a master luthier. Uh, you don't have to trust me. I've only been working here for three years, but I think I've learned a couple things yeah. in that time. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, more, more than the luthier aspect, I feel like this challenge for me was more about uh, coming at it from my professional, being a professional solo singer-songwriter for mm -hmm. the last 15 years. That's kind of, that's really where my mind was on this one. Yeah. Um, so what we did going into this video is Matt went off into the office. He picked out five guitars. I stayed out here in a shop. I picked out five guitars. I don't know what his are. He doesn't know what mine are. So we're going to reveal them to you guys, tell you what the guitar is and why. So really, it's 10 guitars. Five of Matt, yeah. five of me. That's Probably the kind good... of service we provide here. You get five <laughs> guitars for free here at Drifle Guitars. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no one asked, but here we are. Well, uh, first of all, I want to talk about some ground rules that I had, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, of the five that I picked, only one does not have a, uh, I believe, um, I might make a liar out of myself, but I'm 99% sure, only one guitar that I picked does not have a Spruce soundboard. The reason for that being, after working here, I think that in that $1,000 price range, if you're getting something that isn't a Spruce soundboard, you're doing it purely for looks and yep. not for sound. I think you're sacrificing, I know that you can take a non-Spruce soundboard and make it sound really good, but I think that that attention to detail happens outside of yeah. the $1,000 price mm -hmm. range. So I went with only Spruce soundboards. I did too. Okay, good, oh, look at us. All right, yeah, I feel better about that decision now. <clears throat> the other thing that I did, you'll notice on my list, I did not have any Martin or Gibsons. Okay, yeah, well, my thought behind, process behind that was it, you're paying more for the Gibson or the Martin name, and at a, under $1,000, you're probably not going to see that value yeah. return to you. If you spend $3,000 on a Martin, yes, you'll get yeah. that value back and probably and then some. But at this price range, Whenever you get that Martin, you're just paying for the Martin name and you're not going to see any return on that investment. Mm -hmm. And that's me. I would not. It, I'm serious. Sure. Like these, this is a, most of these guitars I would be proud to own tomorrow. And 100%. I really would not get a Martin or a yep. Gibson in this price range. The, the Spruce thing was what really, right out of the gate, that was just an automatic rule for me. Um, wasn't necessarily that it had to be Spruce, but I wanted a solid high quality wood top. Because at this sub $1,000 price range, like you, you're going to spend 800 of it on the top Mm -hmm. <laughs> the top woods and then it, whatever's left over for the for the for the rest right so that was kind of my thought probably like, mahogany yeah, at this price range. Quality, exactly yeah. quality top wood that was well braced and has a good bridge on it it's, that's that's that was most important for me mm -hmm. uh who's first i'm gonna get my one non-spruce one out of the gate for my first guitar i picked drum roll the ovation no i'm just no. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the Guild D120 Acoustic. Okay. My thought process behind this guitar is because this is one that I have actually owned. Being a wee lad, I was heading into college and I uh, signed up for uh, a, a guitar class in college. And this is the guitar that my mom actually bought me as a present to kind of like get me started on my guitar playing career. For this price, you do get a fair bit. It has binding, it has purfling around the edge. Um, and honestly, I uh, I sold this guitar a couple years ago and I, I, I wouldn't say that I miss it, but I just know that I would absolutely buy it again. I think people sleep on guilds a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think as a brand, first of all, I, I took it camping uh, many times. It was in Florida humidity. It was in and out of apartments. It got dropped a couple times. I'd never had a brace come loose, played really well. Yeah. It sounded great. I think for, uh, what is it now? $700. Six, 700 bucks. Yeah. Um, and the I, other thing that I'm noticing on it, and this wasn't on my list, so I'm excited about that, is that it's all solid mahogany back and sides and top, as well as genuine rosewood bridge mm -hmm. and fretboard, solid woods. None of none of its man-made materials. That's so going to give you the more of that natural woody sound. Yeah, that's a sweet guitar. Does it have electronics too? Uh, no, it does not. Okay, so that's part of the reason I think the price is so low on okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I would happily own this yeah. guitar again and for a good price. And you could add a high-quality pickup to it and still be less than a thousand dollars. Yep. All right. So for my very first pick, I went with a brand that uh, has always impressed me. This is a guitar that I absolutely. Uh, would be interested in buying for a specific type of player, and it is the Alvarez MD60 EBG. <laughs> Not a very good name, right? I, I literally, I have this on my list too. So there we go. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so we're in agreement then. I'll tell you the reason why for me. You know, every, a, lot, a, a lot of people who are into like bluegrass or country, they want the classic Martin Dreadnought, uh -huh. um, D18, HD28, D28, kind of all of those things. This is that. This is basically a Martin D18 with herringbone God, on it. God, that's handsome too with that. Uh, it is. This is like, like a classic 
bluegrasser style guitar to me. Uh -huh. and, and it's an Alvarez, and Alvarez's for me have always been high quality instruments. So you're gonna get solid mahogany back and sides on this guitar. Okay. Um, it comes with an LR Bags um, VTC pickup, which that right there alone is a $200 pickup. Yeah. It's got solid, um, was it Sika Spruce? Oh. If you'd quit scrolling, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's got solid Sika Spruce. Triple A Sika Spruce, so it can power electronics around mm -hmm. your house. <laughs> it's got solid bone, nut and saddle. Uh, open gear tuning machines. It kind of checks all those boxes of like a classic uh, dreadnought guitar. Uh, it's a, and it's an Alvarez, so it's to me a high quality guitar for the mm -hmm. price. You know, all these guitars would probably have poly finishes on them and things like that, but this guitar. Well, as we learned from the breakdown series, nothing hurts poly. Yeah. I just wish I was as tough as poly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it's for $800, I feel like this guitar, if you're in the market, if you're, and if you're looking for that classic dreadnought, you know, you want a Martin, but you're not looking to spend the Martin money get this one, you can't go wrong. Okay, so for my next pick, I went with something that I'm 900% sure this is also gonna be on Chris's list. Mm. I went with the Taylor GS Mini. Didn't make my list. Really? Didn't make my list. Dude, okay, so here's why it's on my list. I've played, uh, I've never owned one of these, but I've played a lot of them. I'm always really blown away by the tone that you get for, and the value that you get, like the tone for the price. I'm, uh, I was blown away by the construction, the craftsmanship on it. To me, you almost couldn't have this list without having one of these guitars yeah. on there just because I also know so many musicians that have played literally thousands of gigs through one of these yeah. and they've never had any issues with them. To, to bolster what Matt is saying, like, I always recommend the GS Mini to folks. Folks who are like, hey, I got, a, I got, you know, hey, what's in like the five to $700 range? What should I get? If mm -hmm. it's in that price range, it's the GS Mini that I recommend all the time. The reason that the GS Mini didn't make my list okay, yeah, is because is. I feel like there's just as good, I'll spill the beans, of Taylor guitars that are full size. Uh huh. That I, that meet, met the criteria. So uh, I also okay. had a feeling you would get the GS Mini on your list. Um, uh, the interesting thing about the GS Mini yeah. to me is, um, is that. A, they've gotten a lot more expensive, like a lot mm -hmm. of guitars in the last few years. But it used to be that you could get the GS Mini uh, and, and for like an extra 99 bucks, or it might have been a little more than that, that uh, you would have this little pickup that would just clip in. It was designed like oh. inside the sound hole. It was like a single coil pickup and it would click in. Interesting. Those to me would be even one step better for you for bang for the buck. And that does get me to a point, all of the guitars that Matt and I are showing you guys today are all brand new manufactured guitars that are available mm -hmm. as of the making of this video. Obviously the used guitar market opens up a whole nother can of worms. Mm -hmm. So on the GS Mini front, I would say really go back and get yourself something that's within like the seven or eight years old because they've been making this for over a decade now and there's some really, really good ones out there. Yeah. And I would also highly recommend that you don't go out there and get yourself one of the, um, I'm sorry, one of the Hawaiian Koa ones. You're gonna spend a lot of extra money mm -hmm. for a guitar that A, sounds worse, and a lot of the times on those Koa ones is laminated wood. Yeah. So the classic GS Mini that Matt has here, I think is the best way to do it. And yes, it is an absolutely awesome guitar. I'm gonna kind of do my, my second pick here. Okay. Um, and it's gonna be my rebuttal to the GS Mini, ah, essentially. Okay. Do you have any guitars that you double down on? Like, is there any brand that you have two of? on your list? Yes. There is, okay. I have one. I've got one too. Okay, um, so the next one for me, going along with the GS Mini route, is basically the entire uh, Taylor 100 series. Yeah, So I should I, <laughs> I, I forgot about the 100 series. I should've gone with yeah. the 100 series. So I, <laughs> what I have pulled up right here is the 114 CE. Um, for those of you who don't know the Taylor lineup, this is kind of holdover from their old lineup system. So it's the 100 series. The 14 designates that it's a, a grand auditorium. The CE means cutaway electric. Um, but this to me, seven ninety nine. It's a full size guitar. Wow. Um, you're getting that like incredible precision that Taylor offers because of their CNC based manufacturing, and that's mm -hmm. the thing about a Taylor is that to their benefit and to their um, to their uh, to the downside of Taylor is that yeah, you're gonna basically get a guitar that feels and plays just like a four or five thousand dollar Taylor right here for less than $1,000 with slightly less, well, well, with quite a bit less high quality of woods and not as much work put into the trim and detail and abalone and all that stuff. So, so this one comes with electronics, a cutaway, a case, it's full size and it's $799. Yeah. This is for the kind of person who's looking like in a warship group, um, you're playing in a band locally. Mm -hmm. This to me is my overall pick on my list for the the most rounded guitar. Not just this specific one, but the 100 series. This is what I would get. When it comes to pure sound, I've got another guitar for that. So for my next pick, I'm, I'm halfway, I'm pretty sure Chris has one of these on his list too. This is the Yamaha yeah. Red Label. Yep, yeah. yep. This, was gonna, this <laughs> was gonna be my overall pick uh, for sound. Okay, same. Well, yeah, uh, I remember to this day, I remember the first time I heard a Red Label. Um, I was in a bluegrass jam 
and everyone has a Martin uh, of some kind, class or caliber. And then this guy walks in and he was playing next to me and he hit a G run. You know, it Blair's like, dum -dum -dum. Yeah. it's that major pentatonic. He hit a G run and it sounded like a cannon opened up next to me. And I was like, whoa, what so. is that? Yeah, I mean, and he was, he was a, a really good player, but also, it was a Yamaha Red Label, yep. and that was just like a mind blowing experience for me. And I don't, I don't think it, there were a lot of guys there that whenever they heard that guitar, I think you know, you, it, it's a big thing. Like if you don't play a Martin of Bluegrass World, maybe you make fun of somebody. I think they were all maybe kind of regretting some well, of their purchases after and, that. <laughs> and, and this might blow your mind, but also you're gonna go, oh, I remember now. Good buddy of mine, good buddy of Matt Sam Bush. He comes down here and he stays a lot where we live, and uh, I've worked on many of his instruments. But one of his all time favorites mm -hmm. is a Yamaha Red Label, and this MFR is an absolute cannon and he yep. always talks about it in his circle you know he was talking about um norman blake mm -hmm. be like freaking out about how good his yamaha sounded but norman was like i cannot play a yamaha yeah. i just absolutely <laughs> will not this is a guitar that all of the frills have been stripped from it mm -hmm. with the solid goal of making the best sounding guitar mm -hmm. with the best quality woods that we humanly can for as cheap as possible and for 879 dollars you still have room on the, on the budget to put a pickup in it yep. and still have it just like being an absolute cannon. Um, if if quality sound, quality construction is your absolute overall, mm -hmm. get this one and you will not go wrong. Cool, I'm glad we're in agreement on that at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a little side note, Matt and I have no affiliation with Sweetwater. I know that we're showing you guys guitars on Sweetwater here. We don't have any sort of kickbacks or anything like that. So we're truly picking these because we like them. We're moving okay. into the realm of Eastman on this one. Um, so mm. this is the AC222 <clears throat> CE, the 222 CE. They have some really great ones just above the $1,000 mark, like at the $1,200 range, $1,100 range that I would have loved to have put on this list, but this right. is the only one that they had that I felt like really, really uh, captured what we were looking for as far as the needs for it. So this is basically... <sighs> Look at this. Eastman's, um, what do they call these? They're Grand Auditorium size guitars. They're basically, they're basically tailors. <laughs> like, yeah. for a much better price. Um, so this is Ovankel back inside, solid wood, which is similar to like a walnut. Um, has a more of a Brady kind of uh, mahogany-ish kind of a tone. Solid uh, Sitka spruce top on this thing. Um, but really, it's like I said, it's pretty much a tailor. It's as far as like the feel and the look and all of the uh -huh. things. Like for the next price level up, you can get them with bevels That's and all beautiful, of that stuff. Look at the figuring on that back I know. too. I can't go deep into like what I think about this guitar makes it tick or anything like that, but it definitely checked the box for me. If I'm in the market for a guitar under a thousand bucks, this one's going to be high up on the list. Uh, Eastman uh, has a, repu a good reputation for yeah. a good reason too. You almost can't beat it as far as bang for the buck when it comes to Eastman, as far as like the high trim level for the price. Mm -hmm. um, so you. Uh, Unlike the Yamaha where it's like high-end woods, like with no frills, this yeah. is like frills with a little bit less high quality materials, but a really great guitar, really yeah. well set up. You're not gonna go wrong here. So this one for me, this is the Ooh. Yamaha FSX 830C. I saw this thing Dang. and I, I, cut, I would, if I had $600 free right now, I would get this. It's just, it's this. a good looking, I like the burst on it. Uh, solid Sitka. Rosewood back and sides, probably a laminate, but... Yeah, I noticed that when they don't say, if it doesn't say the word solid, if it just says a species name, it's usually a laminate, yeah. but... I also don't, you know, don't necessarily hate that. No. Um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of good guitars use laminates. So it's got a pickup in it. Um, I, I, I stumbled on this one, and knowing what I know about Yamahas, knowing what I know about, uh, you know, the electronics and everything else, I loved this guitar just for the yeah. price that it sat at. It really is. Um, that's that's a really good one. Yeah. I don't always like burst on acoustics, but I do like this. This is like nice and classic. And that takes it to the last guitar on the list, uh, and it's gonna, it's gonna be another Yamaha. I'm gonna throw it out there for you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> See, I was wondering uh, whenever you're, whenever you double dipped in a brand, I was like, I bet it was a Yamaha too. I went with the one that we just recently oh. did in our guitar breakdown video series. Yeah. So this is the LL16. We'll, we'll put a link to it above Matt's head um, of the video that we did where we did a breakdown on one of these guitars. Really, really impressed the crap out of me. Um, gloss finish, Engelman spruce top. So I guess it's it's not a Sitka, but it is a solid Engelman spruce top. Gold hardware, it's real abalone trim all around it. Um, yeah. A laminated neck. A really cool pickup system that doesn't have any knobs or buttons or anything like that. You just plug in and it works. Great, great, great guitar. For me, sonically, it's a little bit brighter than I like, but you'll see if you watch the video, which just because it's a great video, but like you'll see me kind of like get attached to this guitar. Uh, and it was the first guitar that we've cut in half for the breakdown series that it was like, I really don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was an absolutely great guitar. 
and and sexy. I'll say it. That's just, this is the sexiest it's guitar a good on the list as far yeah. as like. If I see somebody playing this guitar, I'm thinking they spend like two grand on it, and it's not even a thousand dollars. If there's one thing that we could we could get by on this channel over the next several years, <laughs> it's that like. Quit sleeping on Yamaha. They make yeah, a great guitar. Absolutely. Uh, and a great motorcycle. Yeah, and piano. <laughs> and a wave runner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, leave us a comment. If uh, Let us know what five guitars you get for under $1,000. Let us know if we missed anything. And uh, Five yeah. new guitars under $1,000. Exactly. Because, yeah, we know there's a lot of great in the used world out yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> and also leave us a comment if you'd want to know. Uh, we also have some thoughts on uh, electrics that are under $1,000. So if you want to see that video, leave us a comment down below. Yeah, see you guys in the next one. We appreciate you.